132. Steam at 600 degrees and 300 psi is expanded in an 80% adiabatic efficiency turbine to 3 psi. The enthalpy in BTUs per pound of the resulting 3 psi steam is most nearly what? So let's draw a little picture of what's going on here. We have a turbine. So at the inlet condition, we'll call that 1 and we'll call the outlet 2. We have T1 of 600 degrees and P1 of 300 psi and then it has some efficiency as it expands of 80%, so 0.8. And then in the outlet, we have P2, which is lower after it expands, of 3 psi, so much lower, and we don't know anything else about the outlet conditions right now. Now thermodynamically, let's take a moment to just remind ourselves what actually happens in a turbine and how we might be able to account for an efficiency of less than 100%. So there's a figure in the book 26.5, which I'll try to recreate here, and it's a plot of enthalpy versus entropy, specifically for a turbine. So on this kind of chart, you have lines of constant pressure that look sort of like this. So let's suppose this is P1 when we're at the higher pressure, 300 psi, and P2 when we're at the lower pressure of 3 psi. But it's true for any turbine. You have high pressure, low pressure, and it's going to expand. So state one, might be somewhere like here. And then if the expansion is isentropic, which, does, which is to say it's 100% efficient, then state two will be directly below it. So it'll expand from state one to state two. However, if there's some inefficiency, then it will still expand to the same P2, but not isentropically. It won't go vertically straight down. Entropy can only ever increase, right? We know entropy always increases because things are not perfectly efficient. So the path it actually takes is a little more like this. And that comes over to some other state, which if we call the isentropic second state, state two, then we should call this two prime. That's where it actually goes. And since the y axis is the enthalpy, the difference between state one and state two is delta h for the ideal case. So let's write that down. We can say delta h ideal is h1 minus h2 which you'll notice is going to be greater than h1 minus h2 prime because as you ride up this p2 curve you don't get quite as small of an, of an h2 so the delta h1 minus h2 prime is less than h1 minus h2 so we'll call that delta h actual h1 minus h2 prime so the efficiency then of a turbine is given by the ratio of delta h actual to delta H ideal. And to then make that substitution to take it even a step further, that's H1 minus H2 prime over H1 minus H2. And we're gonna come back to this as we solve through this problem, but I just wanted to review this first to make sure we have some context for where we're going as we ultimately try to find out the enthalpy at state two, which is gonna be H2 prime, not H2, but we'll have to find H2 along the way. So let's start with state one. These are the conditions as we enter the turbine. We know H1 by looking it up in the steam table for a superheated steam. Based on T1 and P1, we can pick that out from app 23C. That's 1314.8 BTU per pound. And while we're there, let's also take the opportunity to look up S1, which is 1.627 BTU per pound degree Fahrenheit. And then as we analyze state two, we make the assumption that it's isentropic as a first pass, right? We're not gonna make that assumption throughout the problem, but we're gonna start there. If it's isentropic, then S2 equals S1. And we know the pressure at state two, because that was given to us as three PSI. So P equals three PSI. So now we can go into app 23B, which is the steam table organized by pressure. And let's write down SF and SG from that table, from the line of P equals three PSI. SF equals 0.2009 and SG equals 1.8858. And again, the entropy at state two, if it equals the entropy at state one, is 1 1.627. So we can find the quality of the mixture. So this gas came in, or steam came in, as superheated steam. Now it's gone through the turbine, and it's a saturated mixture with some quality between zero and one. Let's find that quality. So the quality we have is 1.627 minus the low end, which is 0 0.2009, divided by the difference between the top and the bottom end, 1.8858 minus 0 
the quality is 0.846, so it's still more steam than liquid water. And now we can actually find H2 using that quality. Let's write down HF and HG from the same line in app 23B for P equals 3 PSI. HF is 109.4 and HG is 11.22. So we can find H2, which would be 109.4 plus the quality times the difference between 11.22.2 and 109.4 and H2 works out to 966.2 BT per pound. So if the expansion in the turbine were isentropic, then the enthalpy at state two would be this, which is to say that delta H ideal, as we said earlier, equals H1 minus H2. Going back up to remind ourselves, H1 was 1314.8 minus H2 is 966.2. So delta H ideal is 348.6 BTU per pound. But of course, it is not isentropic, so now it's time to account for that. Delta H actual is equal to the efficiency times delta H ideal. So for our case, that's 0.8 times 348.6, which equals 278.9 BTU per pound, only 80% what the delta H would have been in the ideal case. And so now we can use this formula here the relationship between delta H actual, H1, and H2 prime, H2 prime ultimately being what we're after. So H2 prime is equal to H1 minus delta H actual. So that's 1314.8 minus 278.9, which equals 1036 BTU per pound. And that matches up with answer choice C.